Those aren't tears of joy this morning. Those are tears of brr. Brr. Good morning. I got a late start this morning. It was supposed to be 100% clear and blah out, according to the forecasters. And look at this. There's a beautiful cloud bank, some great fog. So I'm kind of kicking myself for not being out here at the crack of dawn. Uh, it still isn't quite time for sunrise yet, but I think I missed my opportunity for getting into great position for sunrise so I'm gonna pull over here and snap a couple of photos even though it's not uh, you know a perfect situation it's beautiful out this morning so I'll make a couple of photos and uh, and then I'm gonna continue on my my plan was to go out and look for moose this morning so I can get a little bit later start when I do that and uh, so that's what I was planning on doing. It was just kind of getting out here around sunrise-ish and looking for moose, but I kind of blew it. I should have been here earlier. I dropped the ball on that. But I'm gonna try and make up for it with some nice moose photos. Hopefully I can find some moose and hopefully the moose are in nice photographic situations. We'll see, there's actually three moose right there. One little bull, a cow and a calf. And that's kind of a yucky situation down in those dead trees. Uh, no opportunity there that excites me. But I'm already seeing moose, so that's a good sign. That's a brisk wind. I think, actually, I'm going to take a picture of this right now because the, the uh, clouds are moving into a nice position where I'm going to have the, uh, the three peaks, the Grand Teton, Tiwanot, and Mount Owen, kind of framed by some clouds. One kind of shooting over the top and then of course ar around the uh, the sides as well. And I'm going to zoom in pretty tight on that with the infrared. It should turn out really nice. And that's going to be sweet and it's just a simple shot. I'm shooting at uh, plus, plus 0.3 on exposure compensation f4. That's a super sharp setting for this and I don't need really any depth of field at that distance. Uh, and I'm bracketing three exposures at plus one and a third and minus one and a third. So I can look at those. I generally like the darker one on this infrared because it really gives it a bunch of contrast with everything going dark. The, uh, the cloud formations as they move around the mountains really make or break the shot and I'm looking for some that, that really frame the mountains nicely. It's just beautiful. It's cold though. It's a cold breeze out here. My eyes are watering. It's not because those aren't tears of joy this morning. Those are tears of brr. brr. Ooh, it's nice to be back in the car. I'm gonna wipe the tears of freezing out of my eyes. It's 12 degrees, and I'll bet that wind's blowing 15 miles an hour. So that's a brisk, brisk scene out there. If I go back out, I'm putting on my down jacket, and then I'll be fine. Okay, there's a cow with a calf moose out here. It's kind of behind me, but I'm gonna turn around and loop back towards it. It's out in the meadow out here with the Tetons in the background. It's, uh, the moose are in the sagebrush right now, so it's not particularly great right now. But I'm gonna go back there and uh, sit in my car and kind of watch them. 
and see if they're going to come closer to the road where I can get them bigger in the frame and get the Tetons behind them, that would be awesome. And I, I definitely, in this kind of situation, uh, just a just a cow moose by herself isn't that compelling of a photograph to me. So I definitely want the cow with the calf in the frame, uh, ideally pretty large in the frame with the Tetons looming behind them. The light is just fantastic out here. And uh, so there's a good potential for this shot. I just got to have the patience and then I got to have the luck to have those moose move closer to me. Uh, I could go out into the sagebrush after them, um, but I'd rather kind of be patient and see if they're going to come towards me. Uh, and that's a little bit more on their terms. And uh, I think I, I have a better opportunity if that happens versus me going out after them. So uh, I like this situation. I'm going to spend a few minutes here and see if it pans out. In the meantime, I'm going to turn around and head back there towards them. But there's a car coming, so I need to wait. All right, but there's the scene, the Tetons out there. Maybe you can see that. Beautiful light, beautiful fog bank on the Tetons. So I think this is a good opportunity. Okay, so that moose situation, it worked out great. Uh, as I waited for the moose, they kept coming closer to the road. Eventually they came close enough. I got out of my vehicle, was able to line up, frame a shot with the Tetons and kind of wait for them as they were moving across to the right. Eventually they did come right across, to, uh, right in front of the lens. Uh, I was shooting with the Nikon D850 and a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. Uh, they actually got close enough that I zoomed to 70 millimeters and I I think that was just right. And uh, got those two moose, nice, perfect size in the frame, I think, with the beautiful kind of morning light on the Tetons behind them, a great little fog bank. So I was shooting at ISO 64 F5.6, and I, I was getting about a 500th of a second on that. So I think if I had to do it all over again, I would probably shoot that at F8. It would give me a little more depth of field to keep the Tetons in focus, but I have a feeling they're still gonna be plenty sharp. I'll have to check when I get home, but I kinda blew that setting a little bit, I think. I was expecting the moose to be a little bit further away, and I wouldn't need much depth of field there. Anyway, I'm going to keep moving around out here. Never know what you're going to bump into. And uh, I've seen some other moose and I've seen some bison and uh, a big mule deer. I don't think I'm going to bump into him again today, but I'm going to come back for him another day because he's really nice, nice mule deer. Okay, I'm going to keep moving. Let's see what else is out there to be photographed this morning. bull moose down here. I just parked my car and walked down the road here a little ways. Now I gotta go down and get to this moose. He's in a pond. It's gonna be mostly backlit I think from the angle I can get. Which is good. Could be good. I think there's a potential for some interesting images here with the bull moose feeding. Be still beautiful morning light out. So I'm uh I'm just going to go handheld with a Nikon D850 and a 100 to 400 millimeter lens. That'll give me a lot of flexibility here as I can zoom in and out uh, on this moose. So I'm going to go down there and see what happens. Good potential here.
Okay, the moose thing is over. The moose went up on this hillside over here. I don't know, you can probably see him right up here somewhere. I, I'm not real good at my finger pointing at things, but where is he? He's right up about there. Uh, but anyway, now I'm back to my car and I'll probably call that a morning. Head back to town. So that worked out good. The, the sunrise worked out way better than I thought. I should have been out earlier. My bad. And then uh, got that cow and the calf moose and then this guy. So overall, just a super fun morning and made some nice photos too. So uh, thanks again for watching and thanks for subscribing if you already have and please subscribe if you haven't. Uh, so have a great day and I'll see you next time. I don't think I mentioned what today's podcast is for my road time listening enjoyment. Uh, I'm listening to Joe Rogan interviewing Billy Corgan. So if you're a fan of the Smashing Pumpkins, then you should definitely listen to it. He's great. Uh, and it's a, just an interesting interview regardless. But uh, that's what I'm listening to today. And it's great. Thumbs up for Joe Rogan and Billy Corgan.